Good afternoon everyone. Today I would like to talk about the bombogenesis called the bomb cyclone, the remnants of Typhoon Nuri displacing cold Arctic air down into the United States, dropping temperatures by 60 degrees Fahrenheit in a day, breaking snow records from the 1800s as well as temperature records from 1877 and 1882 all throughout the western part of the United States. The premise of the videos that I'm doing is that as the sunspot number decreases over the next couple of solar cycles, we should start to have incredible cold events on this planet and unusual weather that can't really be explained, except for an actual grand minimum solar cooling type event. This is a perfect example of what we can expect going forward year after year. This is the currently updated October solar cycle sunspot number. But the following cycles should be lower in count, around 50 per month, which will usher in this new cold era that we're talking about in the grand solar minimum. Let's run through how everything occurred over the last week. Super Typhoon Nuri tracked off of Taiwan, past Japan, rushed over the Kamchatka Peninsula, dumping three feet of snow around Vladivostok, and then continued north up into the Bering Strait and turned into one of the lowest recorded millibar readings at 924 millibar breaking the previous records. There was a storm in 1977 similar but this one could also be in the record books as the possible strongest storm of this nature. And as it continued north it had nowhere to go except right up into the Arctic Circle. Now this was warm moist air that collided with the Arctic dry air. You can see pretty clearly how that air was forced southward. It had nowhere to go. It was two colliding masses. This is the 500 millibar chart. The dark red in the center is the remnants of Nuri and how you can see how it pushed that Arctic air further south toward the United States. Something remarkable off of this is that the air mass up above Alaska is actually warmer than what it is down in the central United States. As you can see the temperature difference there, it's 20 degrees Celsius up across Alaska in the Bering Strait area, but it's minus 20 Celsius down in the United States, or about minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit. The effect that it had was dropping the temperatures 64 degrees Fahrenheit in a single day. Now for those viewers that don't know Celsius and Fahrenheit, here's the conversion for you. 60 degrees Fahrenheit is 15 degrees Celsius. That's a huge temperature drop. And this wasn't in a single location. As you can see, it was across the entire central United States. Some areas, Lamar, Colorado, 41 degree drop in a single day. Amarillo, Texas, 55 degree drop in a day. And when you start to add up these temperature swings on a chart, you can start to see that this is not good for the human body, dropping from 80 degrees down to 20 degrees in a single afternoon. And one of the areas where there was an extreme fluctuation in temperature was in Wyoming. Colorado, Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas, all throughout that area and as well to the east. Denver, 1882 cold record broken, negative 13 Fahrenheit or minus 25 Celsius. And with temperature records like these being broken across this part of the country, although Casper, Wyoming, the temperature data only went back to 1939, you can also hypothesize that it would also be a cold record in that area just because they haven't kept records as long that if they did have data from the 1800s it also would have been shattered. The monthly average for Casper, Wyoming 22 degrees Fahrenheit for this time of the year but it's negative 21 that's a 40 degree flip. And these types of temperature anomalies are 50 degrees below normal. The minimum temperature on the 15th of November looks more like something in northern Siberia in the middle of January than it would in the middle of November in the middle United States. Speaking of Russia, they weren't impervious either to the air being pushed over the top of the globe further down south. Negative 44 degrees in Russia and brutally cold in Eurasia. And accompanying the Arctic blast of cold snow, snow records broken all throughout the same area. Montana with 21 inches, Wyoming with 32 inches, Colorado, Idaho, Oregon, Utah, Washington all setting new records. 50 inches of snow in Gile, 
which is close to Duluth, Minnesota. That's also a new record for them. That is 127 centimeters of snow at a single sitting. This is what it looks like off apparently somebody's back deck from the base. That's not furniture that's buried. That's actual snow from the uh, from the ground level there coming up. Winter storm warnings are out everywhere. Dumping as much as 15 centimeters in every 12 hours, which is about six inches. The upper peninsula of Michigan. This is a photo of what the accumulation looks like up there. And this is a rather large jump from less than 1% snow coverage to almost 20% in about three weeks over the United States. And when we talk about effects from these cold weather events, any crops that were left in the fields because of the late start to the harvest season this year are absolutely not going to be harvested. There's no way they can realistically get out into the fields now and take the remaining wheat or corn or sorghum, whatever might still be out there, flax. It's just a non-issue at the point. You can't go out there with the machinery and even if you have dryers to put that through, those seeds are frozen solid. When they thaw, they're just going to become damp again. What are you going to do? Take those back out of the silos and put them through a dryer? Second, third pass, is that what it'll take to keep that system of food production moving? Sure, this year it's such a minor percentage, but if it gets colder next year, which it's predicted to, the growing season is going to be shorter, which will lead to reduced harvest year upon year, which will have some impact on food pricing, as well as availability of food, exports of food etc. We're not talking something from the IPCC that's going to happen in a hundred years from now that your grands, grand, grandchildren might need to deal with. It seems as though it's already started. This is actually the second year that it's occurring. And when we come to the IPCC, they're so focused on warming models. Why is there no cooling model in play? If climate moves both directions and it has through history, through the last half million years, there have been full-blown ice ages and the planet has warmed, and then it's cooled, and then it's warmed, and then it's cooled. Why are we only focusing on the warming models? Why are there no cooling models out there? We need to focus on the cooling models because we are going into a cool phase right now. What will happen with our climate? Where will our food production areas need to be moved to? How are we going to move all of these people around when our traditional infrastructure grid can't handle or cope delivering electricity to people's homes to heat their homes in the winter? delivering the natural gas to keep their homes heated in the winter because the temperatures are 40 degrees cooler than normal. What if the temperatures are only 20 degrees below normal? That'll still put the entire winter at a negative Fahrenheit temperature range. There'll be an overdraw on all the systems that we currently have and they will break down. There really does need to be some cold modeling included in all these forecasts that the IPCC puts out. And we'll leave you with this, this is one of my favorite images that I've seen since I've been doing my research about this. How is Alaska laughing at the freezing United States? Thanks for watching and I hope you learned something new today.